All right, we are live and set for another episode. Of, uh, actually, the first inaugural, I should say, episode of Nonprofits Radio. We're very excited about this. We have uh, three amazing nonprofits. We're going to be hearing their story. And speaking of three, we have our three stakeholders from uh, Pro Business Channel here in the studio. So you get a three for three, three by three. Do the math. We'll do the math later. Uh, Rich Casanova here alongside uh, Michael Moore is in the studio as well as Artie Rudiman. Uh, we like to call Artie O. Uh, so we'll be hearing from all our uh, our co-hosts here. But what's very exciting, we're actually launching this on Giving Tuesday. So if you haven't already checked it out, hashtag Giving Tuesday is an amazing phenomenon. It started about seven years ago. A global event now has generated over $300 million for nonprofits. Uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is behind this uh, recently as well. Uh, they reached The footprint is now over 150 countries worldwide. We're now broadcasting live from our Pro Business Channel studios here in Atlanta from our uh, billion-dollar Buckhead view, as we like to say, if you're familiar with Atlanta. So let's jump right into the show. So um, uh, Artie's going to come up here in a second, but first uh, uh, and foremost, we're going to introduce uh, one of our co-hosts here, Michael Moore, is going to uh, introduce. Uh, what, if you could, let's introduce um, just a brief introduction of all three guests who uh, and their nonprofits uh, for this segment, and then we'll open with our first guest. All right. Well, thank you, Rich. This is Michael Moore here at the Pro Business Channel, and of course, this is uh, the beginning of Giving Tuesday for us here. We've got the first show on this morning. We've got three great guests coming up. Carisha Moore, her organization is Usher's New Look. I'm waiting. I'm excited to hear about that one. And then Bethany Monroe is going to talk to her about No Longer Bound, which is a phenomenal thrift opportunity to give you some real value out in the community as well as rebuild that community. And lastly, Jonathan Brilling, who is coming to us to bring us information about the Audio Verbal Center. So it's going to be a very jam-packed show. We've got a lot of things to talk about. We've got some great missions. We've got some great opportunities to learn and, and, and work in the marketplace. So let's start out first with Carisha. Uh, Carisha, you've uh, got uh, just a phenomenal background. You're an advocate and an educator. You're at the heart of inspiring, other, inspiring others to reach their potential. That's going to be interesting to talk about. You mentor leaders. You facilitate workshops. You design educational products. You connect people to others with opportunities to promote their personal success through education. You've been an attorney. You are an attorney, I guess. You're an educator as well. And you're currently president and CEO of Usher's New Look, which is the focus of our time today. Uh, you've always looked out at, at providing access and opportunity to the underserved youth. So uh, you're growing up some good people for us. So okay. your story is uh, a long and a good one, I'm sure. So tell us a little bit more about yourself today. Okay, I will. First of all, thank you so much for having me here um, representing Usher's New Look at your inaugural um, show for, <laughs> you know, the nonprofit channel. And so myself, I was an educator and my first teaching job was in Naples, Florida, which at the time was the richest city per capita. But I also taught in a migrant community called Immokalee, Florida. Huh. Um, and it was there that the disparity in education became so evident for me. And so I dedicated my life to making sure that young people, regardless of their zip code or their resources, are able to succeed in life. And what I found is what they need is opportunity, access, and resources. And I was just blessed enough, fast forward 20 years later, that to connect with Usher's New Look that is doing just that. Now, Usher's New Look is focused here in Atlanta, or? It's headquartered here in Atlanta. We also serve students in New York City, but it is based here in Atlanta. We serve students here, and we've served students throughout the world. Now, you mentioned you fast-forward a number of years. We yes. won't talk about how many numbers. <laughs> but suddenly you had the opportunity to put your idea into fruition or meet a need which you had recognized. That's right. So Usher Raymond, the Grammy Award-winning singer, started this organization 19 years ago with his mom. Um, Miss Patton. And what she did at that time is she took her two sons to um, Judge Hatchett's courtroom and allowed them to see juvenile court. And what they saw was young people who who had found themselves in circumstances, you know, not always on their own volition, but because of the circumstances that they were in. And they decided when they left that courtroom is that he wanted to do something about it. And he created an organization called Usher's New Look because he wanted to give young people a new look on life. And so almost 20 years now, we have been working to help underserved youth develop into global passion-driven leaders. And you're... You uh, Artie, you've got a question? Uh, well, I do. It's not so much a question. It's it's the wonderment, you know, reviewing our show notes. I went to the website for Usher's New Look. Yes. And I learned that 1.3 million students drop out of school each and every year. And that means that they are four times less likely to make a living wage. And 75% of the crime committed is by high school dropouts. That's amazing. And what New Look 
uh, Usher New Look is doing is working with these students. Can you tell us the business model of, of, of not the business model, but the services that you do provide to keep them engaged and in school? Absolutely. So our program, we like to say it's a 10-year continuum. So from the time that a, start, a student can enter our program, which is through our Powered by Service program, which is basically an assembly on steroids, we go into middle schools, and it's a peer-to-peer program. So our college students actually facilitate leadership trainings for these young people. That's one phase of the program. And then they can apply to become a part of our leadership academy, which is our high school program. So ninth through 12th grade, these young people are immersed in our four pillars, which are talent, education, career, and service. We believe it's those four pillars that help to develop well-rounded young leaders. And then from there... 86% of our students are first-generation college students, and so we continue on with them because not only do they just get into college, but we help them with internships, career opportunities, and make sure that they're ready to transition into adulthood, and that's called our mogul and training program. So it's three phases of this one-year program, of this 10-year program that we have for these young people. Um, And with with the statistics that you quoted, we serve underserved youth because what we found is that low-income students are six times more likely to drop out of high school. So that speaks to the demographic that we serve as well. Well, the success rate is, is amazing. Just just since you've started, 42,000 applicants or youths have That gone we've impacted your... worldwide. And actually the number now is a little bit over 50,000. Each year we serve over 3,000 students through one of those three phases of our program. And the graduation rate is... It's... 100% for that's our high incredible. school students. I, I, I was going to say it, yes. but I wanted to make yes. sure. That's that's correct. You know, it's, it's like really, yes, 100%. And we're not choosing those students who are at the top of the class. We're choosing those students who have that little bit of spark inside of them that you, they just need to be directed in a positive way. Well, that that is amazing. Are you reaching out to other communities, other cities, and, and, or to start their own or, or to associate with them in any way? Because this is a, a, just a wonderful thing. Yes. Over the time that we've existed, we've had programs in Detroit, Milwaukee, as well as um, New York City, where we're currently operating now, and Atlanta. That first phase that I told you about, Powered by Service, we do those all over Um, the world. So most recently we were in Dominican Republic and we get corporations who say, hey, we would love for you all to do this program here with this particular school. And that's where we are able to go and do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And and your your role with the organization is today? President and CEO. And I started out as a volunteer six years later when I left the law firm. That's the important part of the process is you got, uh, you had a vision, you got involved with the program, you found the program that would work. And now how many years? Six years. Six years total from volunteer to CEO? From volunteer to CEO. Well, you've almost seen some of those 10-year cycles complete. I think you've completed one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to work with this program. So talk to us about um, you know, your, your business model, your day-to-day operations. Uh, we know how you're helping people. What, how can people help you or kind of uh, what's your call to action when you reach out to the community? Absolutely. So we are are a 501c3 organization, and we rely heavily on corporate giving as well as individual and and foundations. So we like to find corporations that align with our mission, which is helping to educate youth and to putting them to career. Um, And so that's a way that we have been able to raise funds. We have corporations that have allowed our students to intern with them, job shadow. So we use the community to give our students exposure as well as financial support for the organization. And and what what do they look for in return? Is it um, do they eventually maybe look at internship opportunities um, and employment? Absolutely. So we're creating a pipeline, okay. right? And so they're investing in these young people now, perhaps from high school or from college. And I'll just give you a quick example. We have a young student who will be graduating college. She's been with our program since high school. Graduating college this year from Tuskegee University, Alexis Mitchell. She was introduced to FedEx, which is one of our um, top sponsors um, and supporters. Introduced through FedEx through a program that they do where we host a professional development for our college students applied for an internship, interned with FedEx in Detroit, and with just received an offer a month ago. She'll be going to Memphis, one of their headquarters, wow. next summer wow. to start in their sales and marketing department. Fabulous. Now, this is a young lady from inner city Atlanta who didn't quite know what she was going to do after graduating high school, and now she has a job at a Fortune 100 company. 
go, go and eat some barbecue in Memphis. I like that. That's idea. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and how do they get in touch with you? They can get in ch- touch with Usher's New Look, either email info at ushersnewlook.org or our website, www.ushers, that's U-S-H-E-R-S, newlook.org. And on social media, all of our handles are at Usher's New Look. That's a pretty good moniker to have. So, yeah. And what's next for you? What's next is that we are gearing up to um, celebrate our 20th anniversary next June 2019, and we will be hosting our Disruptivator Summit. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully I can come back on and promote that. I, I hopefully. We, we, like to, we love to do events, so we appreciate you being with us this morning. Remember, that's hashtag Giving Tuesday for anything you want to post out. If you're listening to some of this and you've had some experience with Usher's New Look or heard about it or need more information, certainly go to the site. So, Miss Moore, congratulations, and you look like you've graduated the program to me. Thank you, and I would like to say that if people want to donate, they can click on that from our website as well. Thank you. Operators are standing by, too, right? (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Appreciate it. Do we still have operators these days? Yeah. (laughs) All right. So next we've got with us this morning uh, uh, Bethany Monroe, who is uh, with No Longer Bound, and I understand you are a store manager at the second location, and that's a whole other story right there. But tell us a little bit about what uh, uh, No Longer Bound, you've been with them for two years, Mm -hmm. and they provide some very interesting services which are uh, of value to our community. So So No Longer Bound is a 12-month regeneration program for men who struggle with addiction. Um, The way our model is unique, other than being 12 months, um, which isn't very common in um, rehabilitation, um, is that we have industries that support us. Our our ministry, our nonprofit organization, is 73% self-funded, and that's through mainly our industries and also donations, monetary donations from very generous um, people. And so the thrift store that I run is a part of that. It's one of the industries. Um, and so our funds go um, to help those men um, have lower costs. Well, that's the model. And, of course, you mentioned the second one. How long is the – when did the first thrift store open, for instance? Uh, it opened about five years ago. Okay. And our store opened two years ago. And the first store is located? In Cumming, Georgia. Cumming, Georgia. The second store is located? Woodstock. Woodstock. So you, you've got the northern quadrant. And what about your recruits, your folks who are going through the program? Where do they mostly uh, come from, and how do they get to you? They come from all over, really. Um, there are men there from Florida, from Chicago, um, from Georgia. Um, family basically research. They find what they think is going to be the best fit or solution for for their young man. Um, and they can go on our website, nolongerbound.com, or they can call. Um, and they'll just start the process there with the intake facility. Now, that takes 12 months, as you said. You've got some kind of screening process. You've probably gotten pretty good at this. And tell, talk about some of the instances you've seen in your two years of some of your employees because they actually work in the stores, right? Um, no, that was our model. We have since changed it um, where the, the men mainly stay on campus, which is located in Cumming. Um, so our business is solely focused on, on generating funds. Um, so we are employed by, by people in Woodstock, the store I run, or the coming store by um, people who live in coming. Um, and, and we just try to um, generate awareness in the community, um, make it okay to talk about addiction again. Um, we have so many people, customers and donors, who come in that either someone's gone through the program or they know someone in addiction, um, and they, they feel safe. They feel like they can open up and talk about their story. Artie? Yeah. Bethany, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Okay. Um, because we usually get a little bio, and I don't <laughs> know that much about you, and our listeners might know. So just very briefly, to, you know, what got you to be store manager? What Fill in the background to that. Well, honestly, when I growing up, being a store manager or working in retail wasn't really my dream. I actually went the path of, of education. Um, I got my master's degree in, in literature and wanted to teach, but um, I just found it, it it wasn't a good fit for me. And when I came back home, um, I, I found myself working at a thrift store, and I fell in love with it. Um, and when the opportunity to serve at No Longer Bound came up, we're not only working at a thrift store, but also helping a nonprofit, um, you know, raising funds for people who want to be restored to their family. That really touched my heart. And so um, they were generous enough to hire me, and they, they have done such a good job of helping me grow as a leader. And I really appreciate that. Their model runs throughout. So not only do they help the men that are in the program, but the people who work there, they really are all about investing in people. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I am also the host of the Business Developers Network, which is all about 
business. And, you know, nonprofits are in business. Yes. And, and you have something rather interesting about the way you go about your thrift store. It's called Excess Matters. Yes. And it, it's a way of uh, everyone donating clothes, furniture, etc., which sounds like the typical thrift store. Right. But you have something unique because you give back yes. to the communities and, and the ministries that would support the, your stores. Explain right. explain that and and let our guests know about it. Yes, yeah, so Excess Matters is basically a gift card program um, where when people come and donate when they first sign up, a lot of people want tax receipts, but they can also designate a partner, which is most often a church. And so quarterly, we just track those people who are giving and the partners that they, they want to support. And at the end of each quarter, we send gift cards, may, again, mainly to churches um, that are supporting us. Because so many churches right now, they, they don't have clothing closets anymore. They have so many people in need in their congregation. And we have been blessed by our donors. And so we, we want to we give back to the community. And we know those churches can designate. They know the people that are in need. So we give them the tools to help them. So they can come. They can shop for clothes. We have furniture, dishware, um, decor. Um, shoes. They can come and they can get what they need and they can do it with dignity. I mean, there's no paperwork they sign up for. They just walk in the store with a gift card and they shop. That's that's pretty awesome. And uh, in our earlier segment, we were talking about students. So is that part of the student voucher program? It's separate. So okay. um, both in Forsyth County and Cherokee County, where our stores are located, um, any counselors can go online and, and sign up um, for these $50 student vouchers. And, again, the students can just come in and shop for what they need, whether that's backpacks or clothing, shoes. That's awesome. Yeah, and so the counselors know what students are in need. Yeah. And so we let them give that away. I've found, I've found some really good deals at thrift stores. It's really interesting. <laughs> it's like a treasure trove whenever yes. you go there. It's just like, wow, I haven't seen well, that in years or whatever. Yeah. E- excess really does matter. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> To the pocketbook as well as the the look. So finally, we got about about a minute left here. Talk to us about your community involvement and the expansion in that arena or uh, any other announcements or events and so forth. So next year we are hoping to continue to open more stores. Um, We're in the middle of a capital campaign with No Longer Bound. Um, We're trying to make more housing, more beds, so more men can go through the program. And so we're trying to expand as an industry to continue to support that as well. Um, So we're, we're definitely looking forward to that. Well, if we can be of help, or uh, count us in. Um, and so, Bethany, th- uh, thanks again for um, uh, telling your story and helping. Uh, so how do folks find you online? So th- if they're interested in the, the ministry, they can go to nolongerbound.com. Or if they want to shop or give <laughs> or volunteer at our thrift stores, they can go to nlbthrift.com. And, of course, we're on, we're on Facebook. Just work, look up NLB right, Thrift. Yeah. And you've got, uh, and and you've got two, two select cities again coming in. In Woodstock. In Woodstock. So nice. you can find them in your phone book or use your Google Maps and, 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 and come see Bethany at store number two. Yes, absolutely. Did you, did you just say phone book? No, you just said yeah. Oh, well, you look up on your phone, your phone yeah. app. Your phone app. Yeah. The, Google, book, the, Google. Book, the book on your phone, yeah. Right. Google Maps will get you there. All right, guys. Well, uh, that we really enjoyed our first and second segment. Right now, we're going to do a little musical chairs here in the studio. So, ladies, if you'd uh, uh, trade places here, and we're going to set up... Um, uh, video and all the audio and so forth for our next uh, segment so stay tuned guys or michael if uh, while we're doing our segment here if you talk to us a little bit about uh giving tuesday or maybe some of our other shows coming up and um well we all know that uh this is michael moore and we all know that hashtag uh, giving tuesday is important so if you're posting anything on the line a day listening to what it is giving tuesday really is one day of the year but it's the tuesday after thanksgiving and of course it's important the entire year to give as we just heard our two ladies talk about the, the giving and the support of their ministries, that's very important. Also here at Pro Business Channel, we have a couple of new things happening this year for us. One is uh, more shows. This one, the inaugural show today, you're hearing it uh, on Pro Business Channel, the uh, Nonprofits Radio, which has three guests now on this show. And then we've got some more segments planned during the course of the day, which will be pretty exciting. Uh, of course, the other good thing that you all people uh, all people want to be a part of is is just participating, support our our local uh, nonprofits every day throughout the year because they've got some dedicated people, and as you've heard the story, at least the first two folks, uh, the the emphasis of being involved with the program that's exciting and giving back is uh, fun for them. So we certainly want to make sure that that continues to happen for everyone. Um, good to have Artie with us this morning. He was uh, talking about business development, and certainly every business uh, needs to talk about development and growing their growing their tribe. 
Uh, Artie, you've been pretty good at uh, bringing the, the new radio channel on and uh, putting some good uh, tribe builders on. So talk a little bit about your show there as we get finished gearing up. Well, thank you very much. Um, Business Developers Network is a forum where business leaders share innovative concepts for business development. And business development is defined as any activity that generates value. You could be an IT director and make um, IT make uh, communication with the company more satisfactory for customers. Uh, you could be a manager and working on a merger or acquisition. All these things bring about value. That's the key is generating value. Value. So thank you, Michael. Well, we've got we've gone through the gamut today. We've had our first two guests on, and we've had a, just a phenomenal opportunity. I'm going to move now into our last segment of this particular show, which has a a a mother slash CEO, right? Yes. And and, and a and development officer, both of the same organization in house today. And we've we at Pro Business Channel have had a chance to uh, work with these folks in the field and see what they do. But Jonathan Brilling and his mother Debbie are with us today, and they're going to talk a little bit about the. Um, the uh, uh, audio – I always get this term. Artie, you've got the term down perfect. <laughs> Tell me what's the name of this organization again? Audio – Auditory Verbal Center. Auditory Verbal Center. <laughs> I, I was looking in the green notes. I have these green highlighted notes, and there's no red background, so I'm having trouble today as a, yeah, co- as a colorblind guy, but that's okay. <laughs> so we got Jonathan Brilling and Debbie Brilling of the, of the, uh, the group, which is really a benefit to our community. It's helping taking the people who – it's good for old men, too, who are hard of hearing, right? Yeah, absolutely. But they teach a very unique skill set, and they, they're very involved and engaged. matter of fact, they, uh, the process they're going to talk about today is just so exciting about how we return communications to the marketplace for folks who have hearing impairment. So, Arnie, I think you're going to lead most of this this time. So, uh, well, thank you. Actually, this is a, a very personal for me because, uh, full disclosure, I am uh, a patient. <laughs> And you're right about the senior part, Michael. Uh, However, um, it's personal on on many levels, and that is uh, we first met Jonathan uh, at a pitch contest for Atlanta Tech Village. And we were – Michael, Rich, and I were were presenting uh, Pro Business Channel, and Jonathan explained his story, and it blew me away. He was talking about – and I want you to say it better than I, but the business started – Basically, on a very personal note, and it started with your mom. So, if you could fill in that backstory. Okay. So, it, uh, Auditory Verbal Center actually started 41 years ago. So, my mom gave birth to a little girl, my sister, um, 29 years ago. And she actually didn't find out she was deaf until about two years old and enrolled my sister into the program. And she graduated the program about six years old. I actually enter- entered the program about Two six months. months after my sister. How, how long? You were two months old. I was two months old, but it was after but, six months. Why did you enter the program? I was born profoundly deaf in both ears. And um, so because of the Auditory Verbal Center, I'm able, I'm able to hear and speak. I don't do sign language. I don't lip read. So after a while, when my sister and I graduated a program, my mom volunteered on the board. And actually later that year became the development coordinator. And that same year took it over and is now the executive director. It's been running it for 17 years ever since. That, that's an amazing background story. Uh, tell us a little bit about the years of building the business because it, it is an industry, it is a business, and you're talking about hearing. And there's many different ways to treat deafness. And what you go up actually uh, auditory – Offers all, if I'm, I'm right. From what we do, you know, we are a nonprofit, and it's a family education program, early intervention for children born with mild to profound deafness. So we start off with hearing aids or a cochlear implant, and teach them how to hear and speak without the use of sign language or lip reading. We have an office now in Macon. And now I'm able to reach out to every child in Georgia through teletherapy if they can't make it to my office in Atlanta or the one in Macon. The whole philosophy is use your hearing and develop spoken language through the natural listening. Um, It is a family education. We're not a school. We're a center. So a family would come to the center for one hour a week, do therapy with the therapist, and then go home and continue doing therapy every day at home. You want to bathe the child in sound, talk to them all day long. So we're educating the family to be the primary role model for their child. When a child graduates from our program, they're age-appropriate, 
expressively and receptively to a normal hearing child mainstream in a regular classroom, no special ed, no IEP, a regular classroom by the time they're in kindergarten, five or six years old, needing no additional help for their hearing impairment. So if, if as in your family, and this mm-hmm. is amazing that you found these alternatives back 40 years ago, right? No, not that old. I'm not that old. 29 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 29 years ago, I needed help for my two children, both born profoundly deaf. Actually, I was told that neither one of them would ever speak. Mm-hmm. And you just heard Jonathan. There's nothing these kids can't do. And mine aren't superstars. All kids that graduate from our program graduate as independent communicators. So the the challenge for a parent with children that are deaf or very difficult hearing is either to go mainstream with sign language and never really appreciate sound and music and, exactly. and, and awareness of their surroundings or the uh, implants. So – how were you made aware, and why is it not more commonplace? What's the challenge for what you're doing? And, and are there other operations similar to what auditory a verbal center in other cities? In other cities, no. Um, in Georgia, we're um, the only center, center-based program. You do have the Atlanta Speech School, which is more of a school-based Other than that, this is a very specialized field. In fact, our therapists um, have a master's in speech-language pathology, but then it's three more years of training to get certified in auditory verbal therapy. There's only 450 speech-language pathologists with that additional certification in auditory verbal therapy in the whole world. So it's a very specialized field, but your outcomes are phenomenal. The problem is your average person automatically assumes hearing loss sign language. They don't realize that children can learn to hear and speak. And, you know, every child deserves the right to hear their mom say, I love you. But people don't know. So coming on a program like this is awesome for us because we're able to educate people that deaf children really can learn to speak without the visual. Yeah, let me piggyback off of that. And what's an interesting fact about the 400-something uh, therapists worldwide is being born deaf is one of the top three birth defects in this nation. And on average, it's about 250 babies born deaf a year in Georgia alone. Hmm. And there's only a small number of therapists that are able to reach all those kids. So we do what we can to let families know that, hey, we can help teach a deaf child to hear and speak. Yeah. Well, what, what about the cost involved? Uh, wh- and what about those who cannot afford? That's a great you- question. We do take insurance. Uh, 63% of our kids are on Medicaid. Um, if a family does not have insurance or they're underinsured, we offer scholarships. I even have some kids that we see for free because the window of opportunity for these kids is birth to about five or six. We can't take a older child who's lived deaf culture, who's never stimulated the auditory cortex of the brain and teach them to understand spoken language like Jonathan. So we've got to get these kids at a very young age. I can't say, hey, mom, wait until you have a better job and can afford it. So we see everybody. I will never, ever turn a child away because of money. So Jonathan mentioned about 250 children are born per year. In Georgia. In Georgia. Are all those uh, candidates for your service? As long as they've got access, yes. As okay. long as they have access to sound through hearing aids or a cochlear implant. Right. Um, and so of those 250, about how many new patients do you, or new students do you have a year? Last year, we serviced 157 kids. Amazing. That's a great. So Currently, 60%. we have 107 kids on our caseload per week right now. Wow. Congratulations. I, I know this is uh, not a, a science show, maybe not your wheelhouse, but uh, – are you aware of anything that can be reduce those numbers as far as preventive, you know, during the uh, pregnancy? Or what do you attribute? Is there any science that shows what, what is, you know, uh, causes this or attributes no, this? No, there's, there's various different reasons from syndromes to genetic okay. um, to antibiotics. Our preemies mm-hmm. 
you wow. know, the antibiotics save our lives or cure our ailments, but your end result is hearing loss. Hmm. And already a minute ago was talking about education. Uh, what about for those of us that do, are not experiencing this? Is there something like do's and don'ts with people interacting uh, with people that have these challenges? Is there something that kind of a pet peeve or something we should do or not be doing or kind of, you know, or, or some cues that kind of help us interact, you know, or. Um... So, so for people who have any kind of hearing loss yeah. right now, one thing you should never do is talk loud. Okay. I don't understand that. <laughs> right. Rich, Rich. Death doesn't mean you need to talk loud and yell at us. You just got to learn to slow down a little bit. Say their name first. Let them know that you're talking to them. And make and then, eye contact. Yeah, right? make eye contact yeah. and just talk nice and easy. Don't talk hey, loud. How are you? <laughs> you know? I can see where that would be annoying. But it is that, that something that you're aware of that uh, maybe uh, we're not aware of and really helps helps as well. Uh, but it's like somebody trying to learn a foreign language. Just because you're talking louder in that language doesn't mean you, you know that <laughs> right, language, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. We, wow. We, we were talking about um, um, newborns and children, but you also service. Uh, seniors and, and people of all ages, actually. Right. But but that wouldn't be for the implants. That would just be for what speech therapy or no? We, we do have an audiology department on top of our auditory verbal program. The audiology department services anybody from birth to senior with diagnostic testing, dispensing of hearing aids, and we do do the cochlear implant mapping for 21 years old and older. So if you your hearing gets to a profound level and you go get a cochlear implant, we can do the mapping, which is the programming of that implant. We also do mm -hmm. adult cochlear implant rehab, where we're doing the rehab to learn how to hear with that cochlear implant. And as I mentioned earlier, I am a patient, uh, and I've been wearing hearing aids for 10 years, and I have to say, uh, having gone to your clinic, uh, I hear much sharper, much l louder than all the services I've ever had before. So that's a credit to the well, thank you. Uh, you get the, get those applause. Applause. Yeah. 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 And the crowd goes wild, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, so we're almost out of time. We've got about a minute left here. Um, so, again, thank you, for, thank you for being here on our novel episode of Nonprofits Radio and uh, helping us tell your story. Uh, what would be a call to action? I mean, who do you look to that kind of donates to your cause and helps further you know, the efforts? And then finally, uh, is there a, uh, an event or something we should be aware of? So, you know, one, one last thing I want to say, and already probably can laugh about this. If you know anybody, your spouse or boyfriend <laughs> or girlfriend, you think they're actually having selective hearing, they, we do do free hearing screening. So one of, the, one of the biggest things you should know is there are more deaf adults in their 40s and 50s than there are seniors. Wow. And there are wow. a record number of 20s and 30-year-olds coming in with a hearing loss because of those earbuds and everything. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted, yeah, those earbuds. Hmm. I mean, now on my phone, uh, if I crank it up too loud, it gives me a warning on there that you shouldn't be going beyond this level. So, exactly. again, how would folks find you online and, uh, and reach our, out to you? Our website is www.abchears.org. Um, we are on Facebook. Um, Which you can type in ABC Hears on Facebook. We also have a LinkedIn and uh, we just now uh, created Instagram, so you can find oh, us. Cool. Everything is ABC Hears. And then uh, we also have a Top Golf tournament coming up in March, oh, so you nice. get to come out and have fun. And All right. We have coming up. Sweet. Well, it's great to have a mother and daughter and, a team. Excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> and, of course, the Giving Tuesday, right. we're on that, that nice. link. Well, I was mm -hmm. going to say hash, hashtag Giving Tuesday and, and post some of this stuff out there. You're going to see us uh, linked on the site. Please treat this as a podcast because that's what it is, and listen to it and pass it on to folks who need to know. That's what we're here today for. So this is Michael Moore here at Pro Business Channel. and. Rich Casanova here on behalf of Artie Rudiman. Again, uh, thank you to all of our guests here in the studio for this inaugural episode. we got uh, lots more coming up today. It's all day, Giving Tuesday today. We've got uh, shows back-to-back. -back. So, again, I uh, look forward to uh, uh, hearing your story as it continues. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Nonprofits Radio.